that brings me to our guest of the day, of course. Um, she is a musician, singer, and songwriter who dabbles in many distinct genres and styles. You may know her from songs like A Letter to My Younger Self, Phantasmas, and her new EP, of course, Get Lost in the Music, which is out right now. You can stream it everywhere. Chat, get very, very excited for Ambar Lucid. Hey! Hey! How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. I love the um I know I know you're not at home or anything, but I, I gotta say I love the portrait. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm in a hotel room right now. <laughs> it's a very nicely stylized hotel room, I will say that. Definitely. <laughs> and uh before we get into your performance. I wanted to just chat with you a bit about your music, about your sound, and how you really got started making music. Um, the first thing I really wanted to know from you is if you have like a first musical memory, as in something that it could be listening to music, it could be playing music for the first time, but something that you associate with music for the very first time. Um, I remember the time that I wrote my first song. Mm. Um, I was 15, and I wrote it in my room in my childhood home. And I was going through a heartbreak at the time, and I just needed an outlet. I needed to express the emotions that I was feeling, and I just decided to write a song. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna try this out, and it felt really, really good. Yeah. Um, and that's when I knew that basically like I was a songwriter and that that's something that I needed to pursue in my life because of the gratification and just like fulfillment that it gave me mm. and not many things make me feel that way um but yeah my first time writing a song was definitely kind of like a breakthrough moment in my life wow that's really cool do you um did you ever record that song or like re release that song at any point yes I did oh. I actually released it on SoundCloud Oh, cool. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, well, what's it called so I can look it up after this? It's called Damien, but I don't think it's on SoundCloud anymore. I don't even know if you can find it. I haven't tried looking for it, but I haven't heard it in a long time. That but I do play like... it sometimes. Oh, cool. Well, that's not... I mean, that sounds like a challenge to me, so I'll, I'll do some Googling and see what I can find. <laughs> cool. Um, but uh, I also heard that you were self-taught in... Um, in your instruments that you play and I I'm wondering what it was learning what it was like learning for you uh and self-teaching yourself um it was actually pretty difficult um mm. because I relied on YouTube videos and books and my like, DVDs and stuff and so it took me a long time to really teach myself because I was my own teacher and even now like I feel like as um as a musician like i'm not advanced as i wish i was just because you know i basically have to relearn um good techniques mm -hmm. um i basically started uh training f uh for my voice about a year ago so i'm basically like reinventing myself as a musician because i want to have healthier techniques because you know i want to play music for the rest of my life and yeah. being self-taught i was i didn't know how to teach myself techniques that were good for me mm -hmm. and it, since you self-taught yourself have you kind of been going back to things that you maybe made when you started uh teaching yourself music and kind of reshape them and re change them a bit to fit new techniques yeah mm -hmm. i've had to do that with Pretty much all of my songs because the technique that i was using with my singing i was straining myself and hurting mm. myself so now i have to go back to them and like revisit them and sing them in a way that is easy and not straining my voice <laughs> yeah we, we love that that's definitely good and when you were kind of developing a singing voice at first and when you were songwriting at first um how did you really find your tone and how has that really changed over time um, I think at first I definitely went off of other singers and just kind of tried to copy them. And as I started training, my vocal coach, she literally said to me straight up, she was like, you sound like you're singing trying to sound like someone else. And I was like, <laughs> fair enough. Like, you're totally right. And my vocal coach, Ray, she helped me sing in a way that works for me rather than me trying to, like, sound like something or trying to sound like someone else. Yeah. And I'm very thankful for that because, you know, it makes... Um, it just makes my singing sound 
more like me and it also makes it easier on me because I'm singing uh, from my like based off of my voice and not trying to sound like something that isn't me yeah definitely and I mean it also helps too with like uniqueness of course like nobody's going to sound like you and you're not going to sound like anybody else yeah yeah and when you were developing your voice and kind of learning um how to use it the best way possible uh, has it really changed i mean i mean i know you got a uh, a coach for it but since for example like your first album and kind of working since then have you found some changes there too um yeah i mean i feel like i'm always changing as an artist as i change um as a person and like as i keep growing up that definitely influences me as a creative mm-hmm. and having uh you know such a distinct voice for yourself do you have any kind of advice for anybody looking to try to find their own voice or any advice for people that want to get into singing more yeah um it's okay if you're not the best at it you can always get better even me somebody who does this professionally always has room for for improvement and um if you really want to dedicate yourself to being a singer get comfortable with the idea that you can always improve you can always get better and um you know be open to learning be patient with yourself um my vocal coach told me that you know to really like basically master singing it takes years and that's okay i'm okay with that because you know i want to sing for the rest of my life so i'm totally cool with putting in the work um, also, having confidence in yourself is key, like believing in yourself and being patient with yourself and just encouraging yourself and and have fun with it. Because if it's not fun, then what's the point? Yeah, exactly. And and we talked about you writing your first song at 15 and kind of realizing that you wanted, to have, wanted a career in music and you wanted to be a performer. And at, at what stage did you decide to move out to los angeles and really just like bet on yourself in that way so i actually moved to los angeles at 17 Mm -hmm. um i always kind of just knew that music was my thing and that i wanted to pursue that but Mm -hmm. as i started to get older um i needed to really be realistic about what i wanted to do with my life and what i was going to do to pursue whatever it is that i wanted and i basically came to the realization right before my senior year i was like there's no way i can spend another year of my life at like in high school i want to dedicate myself to music because at this point at 17 i had already been releasing stuff on soundcloud yeah And I had already built kind of like a little bit of a following for myself and people in the music industry were hitting me up and trying to work with me. So um, having um, music be my career, it became more realistic and I really wanted to take advantage of the opportunities that I was getting. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just wait until I turned 18. So I somehow convinced everybody around me to (laughs) let me move to Los Angeles at 17. (laughs) Yeah, was everybody really supportive about it, or was it a very difficult thing to do? It was very difficult, because everybody thought I was crazy. They were like, girl, you're 17, you're going to move to Los Angeles? Like, how are you going to survive? You're going to be in the streets. Like, (laughs) are you okay? Like, my friends were so concerned. My family was concerned. But honestly, thanks to my manager... Um, because of him, I was able to convince everyone because, you know, he was willing to help me and he was very supportive during that time. Um, so I don't think I would have been, I would not have been able to do it without him in that time. That's really cool. That's really nice to have that support and for him to kind of be there to convince everybody else that it's actually a good idea, which I mean, like they, they've had to come around by now. I'm sure that like, you're actually doing fine. So (laughs) that's good. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Everyone is very supportive now. That's awesome. And, uh, Again, uh, kind of off of that point, is there anybody in the industry that you've met um, since you moved to L.A. that has kind of been a mentor or that you've worked with uh, extensively? Um, Yeah, I honestly would say my manager Mm -hmm. because he's a super hard worker and I definitely admire that about him and he's very passionate and he's believed in me from day one. Um, So having somebody that's believed in me from very early on to this day um, definitely gives me motivation to be the best that I can be. Yeah, and talking about more about your songwriting process too, how do you usually start writing a song? It depends because sometimes, you know, I'll just be existing, doing my thing in my everyday life and I'll just get like a sudden inspiring moment 
and I'll be like, ooh, like, I, I just, I don't know, I'll be humming and I'll come up with a melody and I'm like, ooh, this sounds cool, like, I should voice record this. Mm-hmm. Um, or sometimes lyrics will just pop up to my head or I'll listen to a song that I really, really like and feel inspired by and I'll try to, like, come up with certain chords that sound similar to that song um or i'll be playing piano and just like uh, messing around with it and come up with something like that or i just go into the studio and the producers like show something that they've been working on Mm -hmm. and we just kind of go from there there's really no specific creative process i'm very like in the moment with it and i just kind of trust my intuition and go from there Really cool. So do you, uh, when you start making a song, kind of when you get in the weeds and you're like, okay, I have a really cool melody and I want to get it down on some paper or voice record it and then work on it later and flesh it out. Do you have an idea at that point of what you want the entire thing to sound like? Or is it kind of more of a piece by piece process that you're with it? It's definitely a piece by piece process. Cool. That's great to hear. And um, you also had a few songs I know featured on uh, Elite on netflix uh which is really great uh just talk to me about what that experience was like and talk to me about seeing your songs in that kind of context it was very surreal honestly because so i had not watched the show prior to them asking me to be on it but once Mm -hmm. i actually did watch the show like i fell in love with it and as i was like watching the show i completely forgot that i was supposed to be in one of the episodes so when I went to Spain and like met the cast like it was so crazy to me I'm like oh my god like (laughs) it's the characters like this is crazy like I'm in front of them like they're looking at me they're staring at me because they were actually like you know they were acting um the episode that I was in like they were watching me perform and then Mm -hmm. the episode they were like super into the performance and like so they were all looking at me and I was just like oh my god like (laughs) this is crazy like Guzman is staring at me like wow um (laughs) and it was honestly it was definitely out of my comfort zone but it was such a good experience and i feel like it was definitely something that i needed to experience um and i'm very thankful for it honestly because you know my fan base is growing so quickly because i'm pretty sure like elite or i always say it wrong it's elite but i always say elite um i'm pretty sure like it's been like the number one uh like most streamed show on netflix or something for like the past two weeks which is insane like that is so surreal to me that's so cool so are you up for more projects kind of like that like being involved in some sort of like tv or multimedia project yeah i think so cool and i i feel like uh, kind of to take it back to the very beginning of your music i i feel like a lot of people including myself really got wind of you with um a letter to my younger self I, i feel like that song really just i don't know ran the gamut and just hit a lot of places when it came out how did you really feel when that started to gain a lot of traction and what was your i don't know what is your opinion on that that was very unexpected, honestly, mm. because when I wrote that song, um, I did not expect anything to come from it because uh, at the time that I wrote the song, I had a little of a following, but I maybe had like 2,000 followers on my Instagram, maybe, maybe less. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just kind of doing what I was doing at the time, which was writing songs and releasing them on SoundCloud the same day that I would write them. So I didn't really think much of it until I started to get feedback from people. Like my friends would be like, oh my God, Amber, like I listened to the song and I cried so much. And then just like people that I was, I went to school with that I wouldn't really talk to, they would compliment me on the song. And then um, a YouTube uh, account would post them and the videos would get view- like a lot of views and i was just genuinely surprised i was like wow like people actually like my music that's pretty Aww. crazy wow and kind of uh, around the songs that you were making on soundcloud at the time were they a lot of them ukulele driven because i know that song is very ukulele driven and it's very uh stripped down in that respect yeah most of them were kind of just like me singing with my guitar or my ukulele mm-hmm really cool because i I noticed like especially on your first album that uh you had that song on it dreaming lucid you had a lot of songs on there that kind of um had a lot more i don't know what what it was just a lot more stuff going on a lot more instrumentals a lot more um production behind them and that song stood out to me as a more of a stripped down song uh what was your process of creating the other songs on that album how did they all come together um i'm sorry which album Oh, Dreaming Lucid. Oh, Dreaming Lucid. Um, honestly, when I was writing the songs for Dreaming Lucid, I was not even intending to like work on a project specifically. Like I was just writing mm-hmm. songs. So, um, 
I think the process back then was just like me coming up with some chords on my guitar and recording it on GarageBand. And I had this little mini MIDI keyboard that oh, maybe yeah. had like, I don't know, like eight keys on it. And I would just kind of like uh, mess around with that. And that's pretty much how that EP came together. Really cool. And do you have any favorite songs to play off that album live or even just by yourself? Or that EP? Um, I really like playing Dreaming Lucid by myself for some reason. I just, I love that song. And uh, do you have a song on there that also kind of makes you the most uh, sentimental or emotional about it? Or a song that you really just kind of go back to off that a lot? Definitely a letter to my younger self. Mm -hmm. Just because um, those lyrics just hit home to me. The universe did end up giving me many many flowers and still continues to to this day and whenever like i check in with the version of myself that wrote that song mm -hmm. i if i think about it too much i will literally start bawling just because you know i felt really hopeless when i wrote that song like i really felt like i was gonna fail and because at the time you know i didn't really have much support from like my friends and family for what i wanted to do um and i just felt very lost at the time and i was like what am i going to do with my life like i want to mm -hmm. be a creative i want to be a musician but nobody really believes that i can do this nobody sees that this is a possible reality for me and so everybody was just like really worried about me because they were like what are you gonna do with your life and i was like i want to be a musician and they're like that's not realistic and it feels really good to be in a place where now I can look back and I'm like, wow, like, I am so happy that I wrote that song for myself because I was right. Yeah. And has that kind of uh, continued where, like, you make songs and it's uh, kind of a cathartic experience for you or an experience that really connects you with your own emotions? Yeah, definitely. I actually have some unreleased songs that I refuse to release because of the <laughs> feelings that they bring up in me. Mm. It's literally like shadow work. Like, I'll listen to, I guess, like, old versions of myself, and I'll be like, I know exactly what I was going through at the time, and I don't like the energy that comes with that. <laughs> Man, I, I completely understand that. I mean, it's always good to have some stuff in the archives, just in case, too. Um, but thank you so much, Amber, for the first part of this interview, and uh, I'll let you go ahead and get into your first few songs whenever you're ready, and then you can come on back and we'll chat. And uh, for the chat and everybody, if anybody wants to ask any questions, feel free to drop them in. I'll save them for later. But uh, for now, uh, go right ahead, Amber. All right, cool. All right, so the first song that I'm going to sing is called The Door. <laughs> Oh, this 
this time you can ignore <laughs> I love that. Should we get to the next one? Yeah, okay, so the next song that I'm gonna sing is Fantasmas, and this is the song that I perform on the sixth episode of season four on Elite. So this next song is Universe. Too much 
to my magic This could only end so tragically I'm the pretty sad voice Wanna fall in love with me I don't really wanna show you what I'm feeling My reality screams to me that I'm dreaming I belong to the universe I belong to the universe I don't belong to anyone else, no Mi magia te ha cambiado, ya lo siento Siempre cambio, yo me muevo con mi viento I belong to the universe, I belong to the universe I don't belong to anyone else, no Between you and me Now we both have to believe I can't ever stay in only one place But in the city of nightmares We both embrace I use too much of my magic this could only end so tragically All the pretty sad boys wanna fall in love with me I don't really wanna show you what I'm feeling My reality screams so me that I'm dreaming I belong to the universe, I belong to the universe I don't belong to anyone else, no Great job. I, um, I specifically loved uh, that rendition of Universe. That was great. The guitar work was stellar. Thank you. That was Osman playing guitar. He plays guitar. Hi, Osman. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hey. Hey. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today. I, lo I love your playing on that last song specifically. Um, and uh, Amber, Amber, I, I want to get into your uh, latest EP and talk about your newest music, which I, I'm really excited about. Uh, first things first, uh, the EP is called Get Lost in the Music. Um, and I'm wondering what that title really means to you. So what that means to me is basically just reminding people uh, we need ways to express ourselves. We need ways to just kind of, you know, tune out of the physical world and tune into the non-physical and whatever non-physical may mean to you whether it's spirituality or just like checking in with your inner world um i just wanted to remind people you know have more fun get in tune with yourself um get in tune with what makes you passionate whether that's music or any form of art um just because that was a reminder for me myself because um, there was a period of time where I wasn't getting lost in the music. I was getting too lost in the physical world and not lost enough in the stuff that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when did you get this album together? When were you writing it? Was it during the most of uh, 2020 around that time? Um, it was actually the summer of 2020. Mm. How was that process for you and kind of, well, you know, since we were all, you know, locked down uh, for quite a while, what was that experience for you like, and what do you think um, went into your music during that time? So I think I had a lot of fun creating this just because um, prior to 
the sessions that I was doing for this EP, I had not written music for like six months. And I was feeling very uninspired and unmotivated um, until I basically had the experience that inspired the song Get Lost in the Music, which was a psychedelic trip. And basically, like, I kind of, like, my head came out of water, basically. Like, I, I got a breath of fresh air. And I was like, oh, my God, I need to work on music. Like, I need to create. I need music in order to get out of this little funk that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And um, going into the sessions, I actually wrote most of these songs in Scottsdale, Arizona with the ladies. And writing music with them is always a lot of fun because, you know, usually we're um, usually we're a little stoned and just like having fun. And it's it doesn't even feel like we're working whenever we're making music. Like it just feels like we're hanging out and we just happen to be making music. And I really needed that because I didn't get to experience that for so long. And um, the energy that I put into this EP, I feel like definitely reflects on how much I needed to just write music in this point in my life because I just felt so out of tune with my creative side. Mm -hmm. And what, what you mentioned about, like, the creation of the EP and, like, working with everybody in Scottsdale, Arizona on it, too, it definitely is, uh, I, I think, some of your most, uh, like, trippiest work that you've put out in, uh, I mean, ever. And what what is your take on that, and where did you kind of get the idea to make it more of a, of a trippy variety in terms of sonically? Yeah, um, I was very inspired by spiritual music and just like mm. psychedelic music at the time i was listening to a lot of middle eastern psychedelic rock oh cool so that definitely inspired me sonically um and yeah i feel like just listening to psychedelic music at the time because i was that was basically the summer of 2020 was when i started my conscious spiritual journey and i feel like that definitely reflected in the music that i was listening to and the books that i was reading mm. um and it just directly influenced the music that i was creating as well yeah and talk to me a little bit more about that and like the spiritual journey and obviously it sounds like your um spirituality is echoed throughout your music so what is that connection really for you um well to me spirituality is very very important just because it allows me to kind of tune in with myself and focus on the bigger picture, mm -hmm. um, what my intention is as an artist, what my intention is when it comes to writing music, the kind of impact that I want to have on people. And also, um, most importantly, spirituality gives me the ability to, um, or at least it gives me the motivation to want to really take care of myself and um, be in a mindset and physical health and spiritual health um good enough for me to be able to help other people because i can't help other people if i'm not helping myself yeah. so spirituality is very important to me because it allows me to tune into different aspects of my life and i can do that i can do that in so many ways i can do that through music um i can do that through tarot i can do that through drawing through writing journaling um, so I just I feel like spirituality helps me be more specific with what my intentions and manifestations are mm -hmm. or like what I seek for myself in my life. And mm -hmm. I feel like it honestly just allows me to make my path more fulfilling for myself. Mm -hmm. And in that vein, would you characterize this EP a bit differently than the rest of your work that you've done up to this point? Um, I don't know. I feel like my music has always been spiritual, mm -hmm. but I feel like this EP is definitely more consciously spiritual. I feel like in the past, it was more subconscious. I see. Okay. So this one's more like it's spiritually driven, whether as the other ones, like, uh, of course, like you and your spirituality will be in whatever you do. So that's what, that's what happened. <laughs> and, uh, what's the story behind the album cover too, which is a very like cool, striking image of you kind of like following but i'm not sure <laughs> yeah um so for the cover art i just wanted to make something that just kind of like represents my aesthetic and like just yeah. the energy of the ep in general and i feel like that specific picture that we took definitely goes along with the like get lost in the music or it, it goes along with also like the song space cowgirl like traveling through space yeah. and time, mm -hmm. like, true space cowgirl um yeah, I feel like visually 
that picture definitely did justice to the songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in terms of, uh, you mentioned Space Cowgirl, which is like the first song in the EP. In terms of like ordering the songs, uh, do you have a huge hand in that? And did you really, really want to start with that track? Um, honestly, I wasn't really sure how to like put the orders of the songs. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just like took other people's advice on it yeah. just because, you know, like to me, I hear these songs all the time <laughs> and like to me, they could be in any order and it won't sound the same, but like, I just, I won't really like see a difference. I just kind of like took my team's advice. I was like, Oh, like, you know, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, after it came out, did you kind of sit and listen to the EP or were you just kind of, I mean, from all that work of just listening to the recordings consistently, I imagine it's like tough to sit down and listen to the work after it's released, but have you been getting a chance to listen to it at all and just pick it apart for yourself? So right before the EP came out, mm -hmm. I was actually blasting all of the songs over and over again because I was like, all right, this is my last opportunity to <laughs> listen to these songs before the rest of the world. So I was definitely abusing the EP. And um, in, in that area, what was the biggest challenge, you think, of uh, getting this EP together? Um, ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think, honestly, the biggest challenge was just myself, like how, just like the anxiety that I had putting it out, because I was like, oh, like what if people don't like it? Like, what if, what if this, what if that, what if this? Because, um, you know, the writing comes very easy to me. Yeah. Um, because, you know, th those are my words. This is like my world that I'm creating and I do it very privately. So I feel very comfortable with the whole creative process. But I would say that the most difficult part about it is just putting it out to the world and having to hear feedback on something that is very personal to me and something that directly like reflects stuff that I've experienced. And it is very scary to put like basically like journal entries out to the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, at, at that time, it's just like things you can control versus things you can't really control and like how people respond to it. But how have you been finding your fans have been receiving the work? Have they been really enjoying it lately? Have you been getting a lot of great messages about it? Yeah, I'm actually very happy with the feedback that I've great. gotten because I feel like everyone is um, pleasantly surprised by like this set of body work that I created. Um, with Julian and the Wavies, um, and I don't know, I'm very, I'm satisfied with the response that I've mm -hmm. gotten, but at the end of the day, you know, it's what I, what's how I feel about it that really matters. Exactly. And through that whole process, what would you say, if anything, did you really learn more about yourself and how you write and how you view music? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like for a long time, I was not very conscious of like the specific lyrics that I would put into my song and I feel like um, I the thing is like I wouldn't be very conscious but at the same time I would also put way too much pressure on myself to kind of like be I don't know like a super good like uh, writer but I think for get lost in the music I kind of was a little bit more laid back I was like you know what I'm just going to express whatever I feel like I need to express in this moment. I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it. And um, I definitely made the realization that I'd like, I need to explore a little bit more lyrically and just kind of like say things a little bit differently than I have in the past. Cause I do talk about the universe a lot <laughs> and I want to be able to do it in other creative ways. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I did learn a lot about myself as a songwriter and basically it was like shadow work like i i realized that there are certain aspects of myself that i have to be more comfortable with mm -hmm. in order to really be satisfied with the stuff that i write i thought it was really cool because the first song you played today is was the door and that to me is my favorite track on that on your ep and I'm wondering just how you built that from the ground up because it, it kind of uses a lot of, as you were talking about psychedelic influences, but it's very like 70s funk psychedelic and I, I just love it. Would you just mind explaining to me how that came together? Yeah, so the original song um, I actually wrote when I was 16 and I listened to a lot of 
psychedelic rock at the time like the doors were my favorite band oh, cool. i was obsessed with um oh my god why can't i remember his name was the lead singer um John Wo- jim. jim morrison yes jim morrison yeah i don't listen to the doors anymore as much but <laughs> <laughs> um i was super obsessed with them when i was 16 and uh i was also really obsessed with willow so like the, oh yeah those two artists heavily influenced that song and i actually put the song together with a bunch of loops that i found on garage band on my phone and i just kind of like built the song like that mm. and then years later the wavies who i work um with uh for a lot of my music um i work with a lot of my- I don't know why I worded that so weird, but, um, (laughs) they really, really love that song. Like they always hype that song up and they're like, we have to re-record this. (laughs) And basically like they finally convinced me to, and I was like, you know what, let's do it. Cause the song goes along with the message that I'm trying to send. So might as well do it. And they basically re-recorded everything that I recorded, um, on my phone years ago. Wow, that's great. I love that story, too, that they kind of willed it back to life for you. That's great. And uh, I know you also have a music video for Get Lost in the Music, uh, which I really liked. And I- I'm wondering, just talking about the video and talking about music videos in general, are, do you consider yourself more of like a visual person? And do you kind of look to any other um, modes of art for inspiration or other like films or anything specifically for that video? Um, I'm sorry, for what video? Oh, for the uh, Get Lost in the Music video. Yeah, um, so that video was actually inspired by the movie The Holy Mountain. And for music videos, I definitely find inspiration from other movies or even other music videos. Um, Or even pictures. Uh, Whenever I don't know what I want to do for my next music video, I just Mm. go on Pinterest and I look at a bunch of like photography um, and just like artwork from other artists. And that's how I find inspiration. I feel like I'm not very good at just like coming up with things at the top of my head without looking at something else for inspiration. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel the same way whenever I make art because I like to draw sometimes and I always need some kind of reference in order to feel like really inspired to create something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you mentioned that before. I, I, I didn't catch it before, but did you say that like you made the EP cover for this? Um, I didn't know. Oh, okay, cool. I thought I thought you said that. Um, but uh, what was the process of uh, concepting the video too, and uh, how did you kind of get your, the ideas in your head? Like, of course, going through Pinterest and kind of finding your inspirations there. But uh, when you decide, okay, like I want this, I want it to look like this, and I want it to come off this way thematically. Yeah. So usually, how I do it is I will make like a kind of like a mood board and kind of like a description of what kind of energy I want the video to radiate or what kind of message I want to send for the video and for Get Lost in Music I created a slideshow of like uh, photo references and just kind of like the general message that I wanted to send in the video and from there um, that was sent to Courtney who produced the music video and she kind of just goes along with like my initial like idea Mm. and then builds on onto that cool yeah because i noticed a lot of really interesting themes going on in the video especially kind of juxtaposing between um like you in a car you in the diner but also you in these kind of lavish two outfits with like the the white outfit and then like there's a black outfit kind of looking like uh, like a maestro or something at a, at a circuit like a ringleader or something like that and then coming together at the end um what was the idea behind those outfits and what would you say is the entire kind of theme of the video yeah so the theme of the video is basically like um i guess like a journey of the of a conscious and subconscious side of myself coming together and like accepting that they're both part of a whole and that they're not necessarily like completely separate um and the white represents the conscious mind and the black represents the unconscious and yeah that that was basically like the general message of that video was um people or i just wanted to like remind people that like hey you know you have your subconscious mind even if you don't realize that it's there Mm -hmm. it speaks very very loudly 
I also uh, really like the tarot card imagery too. And uh, what compelled you to put that in there? Because I know you mentioned tarot earlier in the interview. And uh, are you, um, do you read tarot cards? Yeah, I do. I'm actually very passionate about tarot. Cool. And tarot is the reason why I am so in tune with my subconscious mind and why I'm in tune with other people's subconscious mind. Mm. Um, because, you know, like, you can't really hide or suppress or run away from anything if you're doing tarot readings on yourself because the cards will read you the cards will call you out the cards will be like hey you're not dealing with this or hey you're ignoring this or hey you truly feel this way about this but you're pretending like you're not um so yeah i mean tarot is a really good way to do shadow work and a way that i always stay in tune with my subconscious mind I love that because I, I also actually read tarot cards, which is kind of, kind of crazy. Uh, do you have a favorite card just like off the cuff? Um, I would say King of Pentacles. Ooh, it's interesting. Ooh, very interesting choice. My, my favorite is the Fool. Uh, so I, I was really happy to see that in the video. I think you had like a few that I saw. It was like the Fool you had in there. You had the World in there, which like awesome like integration of those into the story. I thought. Um, but yeah, that, that's 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 so cool. Uh, and for right now, I, I want to kind of get into your last few songs that you're going to play for us. But uh, thank you so much for this conversation, and uh, we'll continue it right after. Okay, cool. All right, so the next song that I'm going to sing is Get Lost in the Music. <laughs> Da, 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 da. 
The next song is called Un Animal. que yo pertenezco aquí cantando y curando ayudando a entender y encontré reyes en lo percibiendo más en mis deseos mi guía me dijo que yo ahora vivo en nueva tierra Creando divina existencia No me importa lo que me dicen Seguiré floreciendo Liberando, volando por dimensiones Uno vivo sin mi sombra Corazón a mi sombra Mi vida me habla cuando yo me voy a dormir Mensaje me manda dentro de mi sueño que yo ahora vivo en nueva tierra creando divina existencia no me importa lo que piensen seguiré floreciendo tres, tres, tres descubre tu propósito despiértate de donde viene tu enojo tres, tres, tres Thank you, thank you to you and Osman again <laughs> for a lovely performance. Um, and uh, just a few things before you go. Uh, number one, I was wondering if you have any plans in the future for any live shows or any touring. Um, do you have any plans for that song? Um, so I'm not touring until next year, but I do have a couple headline shows coming up in the fall. So follow me on my social media at Ambar Lucid everywhere to keep updated on that. Um, I should also be doing a, a few festivals, but I'm really bad at keeping up with stuff that I'm doing. So just go on my social media and I'll post about it and you can see about it there. Um, and yeah, also check out my EP, Get Lost in the Music. Heck yeah. And uh, just another thing, too, since you kind of, I feel like you've always been somebody that's experimented with sounds uh, in terms of uh, your music. And on this mo on this recent EP, I feel like it's the most experimental that uh, we've seen yet. And I I'm wondering what styles or textures or movements are you looking to get into with m your next music? So, I've actually been thinking about this a lot lately, and I want to get into more rock. Um, cool. But I want to get into, like, I don't know if you know the band, like, Slaves. Um, oh, I, oh, my God. I love Slaves so much. Yeah. I love them so much, and they've been my biggest inspiration. They're incredible. Recently. They're incredible. They, yeah, they. I think their album came out like last year or something like that. But it's it's so freaking good. Uh, if anybody in the chat likes Slaves, you or like doesn't know them, you gotta check them out. They're so freaking good. Um, oh, yeah. Do you have a favorite song by them? Um, probably the Hunter or um, Cheer Up London. Oh, cool. Yeah, love those tracks. And uh, is, do you have any final messages for your fans watching? Um. 
I mean, follow me on my socials. Check out my EP. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope um, for anybody that didn't know me prior to this, um, I hope that I can inspire you to check in with yourself and to be more in tune with your true path and your spiritual journey. Um, that's what I'm here for. And that's why I make music. Yeah. Well, um, Ambar, uh, I wanted to thank you so much for joining the stream, for playing some music, and for getting a chance to talk to me a bit about everything. I, just good luck with everything, and um, I, I wish you the best. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.